Hi, and welcome to Rental with Tim. I'm Tim. Thanks for being here. I always appreciate the time that you and I get to spend together, so thanks for tuning in. And I hope wherever you are that you're happy, healthy, and staying safe. On today's video, I'm going to be talking about a newly released daily trainer from New Balance. It's their Fresh Foam X 1080 V12. New Balance has made some changes over last year's version of the shoe, including a completely redesigned heel counter, among other things. But did these changes make the shoe better or worse? Well, that's the question we're going to try to answer today, so be sure to stick around. But before I get into it too far, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes I'm about to review for you. So let's do that. But then when we come back together, I'm going to take a real close look at the New Balance Fresh Foam X 1080 V12 to try to answer that all-important question. Are these the right shoes for you? Every season, till the end of the world. Every moment, all the memories unfurl. I was chasing the shadows, they were slipping right out. I did purchase these with my own money. They retail for 160 US dollars, which I think is a little on the high side for a daily trainer. On my scales, they came in at 10.2 ounces for a US men's size nine or 288 grams. I did order mine true to size, but they run a little long and we'll talk about more of that here in just a minute. So let's start with midsole first. Now here they have their Fresh Foam X midsole material from the heel all the way to the toe. They have an eight millimeter offset. Now I can't give you an exact stack height of the heel and the forefoot because New Balance doesn't list one and the sites that I normally go to to find that information all had something different listed there. One had 39 millimeters in the heel and 31 in the forefoot. Another had 29 in the heel and 21 in the forefoot. So I wasn't real comfortable in trying to give you an exact number. But I did compare this to last year's version, the V11, and it seems to be the same. So I don't think that they changed the amount of midsole material that's underfoot. And I was reporting that shoe as being 30 millimeters in heel and 22 up in the forefoot. And I did take my tape measure and kind of did a rough estimate. I think that's pretty darn close. So while it might not be an exact number, I think 30 millimeters in the heel and 22 up in the forefoot is going to get us really close to being there. Now these have the same type of feeling as the V11 did to run in them in terms of the amount of cushion, the amount of energy return that I was getting from them. So there's still a very comfortable, soft, cushioned uh, ride for a daily trainer. One that's really comfortable that you can log a lot of miles on but they don't feel the same as the V11s, even though the comfort is, is there. You know, the comfort is very similar, but the overall ride experience is very different. In terms of the comfort, you know, where it falls within the New Balance lineup of shoes, I would say that these fall somewhere between, you know, the 880, which is a much stiffer ride, much more re responsive ride, and then the more V3, which was one of my favorite, it was my favorite, Max Cushion Daily Trainer of 2021. So if you're a New Balance fan and you're trying to uh, gauge that way, you know, these are going to fall somewhere between those two. Maybe a, a little bit further towards the more V3, but they're, they're in between those two shoes in terms of the amount of cushion. Now, the reason that the ride feels so different is it's this shoe, this version of the 1080 is wider than what we saw in the V11. And they start wide and they stay wide all the way through to the heel where you can see that these snug up quite a bit in the heel and the forefoot is more rounded around the edges. But now if I were to compare the 1080 V12 with the more V3, now here, they're very similar. So 
New Balance went more with the geometry of the Moore V3 with the 1080 V12 version of the shoe. Still a lot of fun, very comfortable to run in. You know, you can log a lot of miles in these. And all those miles that you're going to be logging in are going to feel pretty stable because of that additional width. As long as they have these turned over, let's take a look at the outsole. Here you can see that they have rubber in all of the high abrasion areas, you know, around in the heel and really from the midfoot all the way through to your toe off. A little bit of that Fresh Foam X midsole material is exposed here, but not a lot of it. Pretty much everything is going to have a lot of ground contact as, as being covered. Now, they also included some additional or changes to their flex grooves. That just makes it a little bit more smooth or natural feeling as you flow through your gait cycle. So let's move on. We'll talk about the upper. But before I get into talking about the type of material that the upper is made out of, I really want to take a second or two and just talk about the fit of these because it has changed pretty significantly over last year's version of the shoe. These do run longer significantly or noticeably longer and they're also a bit wider. And I'm going to demonstrate here. You can see where I'm using my thumb as the measurement. That's our universal measuring tool to determine you know, whether or not we have a good fit on our run shoes. And you can see with the uh, 1080 V12s that there's uh, quite a bit more room between the width of my thumb and the end of the upper. Whereas the 1080 V11s fit me perfect. You can see that that is exactly where I wanted it to be. So these run maybe a quarter size uh, up from or longer than what last year's version of the shoe is. Another way to look at it too, and sometimes I find this to be helpful, is I pulled the insoles out and you can see this, the, the bright blue is from the 1080 V11 and then the darker blue is the 1080 V12s and I got them lined up pretty darn close to one another. And as I do that, uh, you can see that the darker blue sticks up quite a bit higher. Now, while this isn't <laughs> an exact science, you know, the way that they cut that um, insole to fit the upper or to fit the uh, bed of your running shoe is going to give you at least a rough idea in terms of the amount of volume that it takes up. So you can see that the dark blue does show through quite a, you know, quite a bit in terms of the length, but also in the width. And you can see that it's quite a bit wider here. So while again, it's not an exact science, pulling out the insole sometimes can give us a clue or an indication as to the overall volume of the shoe in comparison to, in this case, to last year's version. And the 1080 V12s, they run longer and they're a little bit wider up in that forefoot. The upper is made out of the hypo knit material. It's got a lot of stretch in the toe box. I found it to be really comfortable, however. It's soft to the touch, but there's a little bit more room, I think, than what I really need. I did feel like my toes were kind of swimming around a little bit, so more than enough room for me to be able to splay my toes. Now, in the summer months when the weather gets a little bit hotter and my feet swell a little bit more, I might really appreciate that extra room, but right now, I feel like it's just a little more than what I need. Now, you'll lose that stretch when you get to the midfoot section of the shoe so that you can get locked down and secure across there, and I never had any heel slippage so I felt like I was locked in pretty good back to the heel counter. Just one note about lacing the system or the lacing system here. Because it's a bit wider up in the toe box, when I did cinch the laces down, I did get some puckering, especially right at the start of the eyelet chain here. Uh, and I think that's mainly because there's a little bit extra width up there. And because these run a little bit long or big, that there's more material there than what I really need. So let's take a closer look at the lace and closure system and the eyelet chain that they have here. Now, it's a pretty standard eyelet chain for the most part. They do have some plastic overlays around the eyelets to give it some durability. So you don't have to worry about your laces pulling through. And they did add that extra eyelet in case you want to run with the runner's knot. Something that does kind of bug me about the way that they designed the system, however, is that in order to, if you want to change out your laces, for example, because I always pull the laces out of my running shoes when I'm doing a review like this, just so that I can give you guys a better look at the tongue and whether or not it's gusseted or not gusseted, the padding, all that kind of good stuff. But I can only really give you a close look if I first remove the laces. Well, when I go to put these back in, it takes me longer than it should. And that's because the tongue is sewed in past that first set of eyelets. And that means that when you go to relace your shoes, 
you don't start by crossing over like you normally would. You have to go up the same side that you start on first, then you cross over. So that means that you're kind of fishing around on the inside of the upper to find that hole in order to be able to you know, stick the lace back up through before you can cross over again and then continue on. So it does take a little more effort to do that than it would if it were just a standard eyelet chain where the tongue was sewed in past that first set of eyelets. So just something to note, something that kind of bugs me a little bit. I hope that maybe in version 13, they go to a more traditional system like that. <clears throat> Again, it's kind of a small thing, but if you like to change out your laces, it might be a big deal to you too. And since I went to all that trouble to pull out those laces and to relace the shoes, let's go ahead and take a look at the tongue. Now here you can see that they do feature a semi-gusset and I do appreciate that. So you don't have to worry about your tongue bunching up or migrating around from side to side. It's going to stay in place. And we can also see that you know it's got a moderate amount of padding here. So I think you got the padding just about perfect. So let's take a look at the padding around the heel collar and the tab. I think the first thing you're going to notice over last year's version of the shoe is they went back to a traditional heel counter here. Now there's plenty of padding around the heel collar and the tab to keep you comfortable when you're out running. And I would say that it's that pillow style of padding and it, it rests down almost to the footbed and it's a generous amount. So I always felt very comfortable here. It feels really good on my Achilles. I like this a little bit of an Achilles heel flare that makes it just really comfortable. And all of that works together to create a nice solid heel pocket for your heel to sit in. So I didn't have any heel slippage from side to side or up or down. And as long as we're talking about the heel, let's just put it up on my shoulder and give it the pinch test, see how much structure that they have. And as I pinch that heel counter together, you can see that they have a fair amount of resistance. So they've, they've built some structure in there. And again, that's to help hold your heel in place create a nice stable ride for you. That along with that extra width, these are a very stable feeling to these when you're out running. Overall, I like the changes that they made. I do appreciate going back to a traditional heel counter. I, I like that and prefer that much more so than what I found in the V11. I like the wider stable platform that these are on. It's a bit more of a feeling of like running in the more V3, which was my favorite Max Cushion Daily Trainer of last year. They're not nearly as cushioned as those, but they have a very similar stable ride to them when you're out on the road. I would definitely say though that the biggest issue for them is gonna be in their sizing. I think a number of people are gonna probably purchase their normal uh, running shoe size only to find out that these are running just a little bit big for them and might have to exchange them for a half size down. So definitely, if you have the opportunity to try before you buy, I would definitely recommend that. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim. No!